There we go. Okay. There we go. I'll say that again. Good morning. How's that? Good morning. It is. It is good to see everybody. And um, like I was saying before, um, we'll we'll be in the service this morning. I'm sure some people will show up midstream, and that's okay. But f- welcome to all of you here and all of you at home watching. We are glad that you could be a part of our service today as we worship together. Uh, I just have a couple announcements that need to be made um, this morning. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Pastor Chris is away um, with the teens um, and students that are, went to West Virginia, and uh, they are there safely, and they're getting going, so it's great. So we'll, we'll be praying for them later. Um, uh, just a couple of things. So uh, in your bulletin, you'll see different pieces of paper. Um, there's a blue one here about the American Baptist Men Men's Retreat. That's an opportunity for men for you to go and, and to participate in July. Um, also, um, you'll notice about a sight and sound trip. If you're interested, they, they need to know if you, any interest to go see David. Um, that'll be later on um, in September of this year. And also, I wrote down here, don't forget, um, I think up on the screen we have Vacation Bible School. Um, we have uh, Vacation Bible School that's going to be coming up. Any opportunity, or if you have neighbors with little children and whatever, friends, just encourage them to come and participate. It's going to be a great opportunity to be together. And uh, the last thing, um, we're going to be doing something in July, which I think is going to be cool. We're setting the tents back up outside here. And um, for July 6th and 13th, we're going to do some, we'll call them, I guess you can call them like an old-fashioned tent meeting. Uh, we're going to be doing some hymn singing on those nights outside and uh, devotional and uh, a prayer time. And uh, also, we'll have refreshments. We'll be served, too, as well. So that's on July 6th and 13th. But the trick is you got to bring your own chair. We, will, we have chairs. But if you can bring your own chair, that wouldn't be helpful, too. Bring a lawn, a lawn chair or something like that as well. But also, on the 20th is our family meeting. And we were promised by a couple people in our church that we would have ice cream that night. So we're going to do it outside under the tent. But you have to come to get ice cream and then stay for the meeting. So that's how that works. So, all right. I think that's it for um, for announcements. Um, yes. Oh, I was just pulled into my ear here that um, VBS could use some help. So if you're interested in helping, we need people to help as crew leaders, which means your job is to basically walk around and help the kids. Um, it's not your job technically to go do all the teaching and, and lead, per se, but it's helped to, to lead the group of kids as they go around uh, into their different uh, activities. So please see Becky. She's down here. You can't miss her. She's hobbling around on a bum foot. So um, I think that's about it. My friends, let's do this. Let's stand together and let's start to worship and let's sing, Speak, O Lord, number 280.
As we uh, start into our time of worship today, um, I want to re read a passage to you that comes out of John 14. Many of you know this passage um, because you hear it often, even at funerals. Um, but today's not a funeral, but today's a day of celebration because we can look to see how Jesus resembles the Father. So happy Father's Day to all of you that are here. But we have the ultimate example of a Father through Jesus and through our Lord in heaven as well. So it's John 14. This is what it says in John 14, 5, actually. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Will you pray with me? God, as we've gathered today, we give thanks for... I know I give thanks for my own father, Lord, but I give thanks for all the dads that have gone out and served. And I know many have um, not only have had their own children, but they've been a father to other children, and uh, they have loved on them and appreciated them. So God, today as we've gathered, help us to celebrate that it's through your example that we can be better dads to all people. And so God, be with us now, and let our hearts be in tune with you, and may your spirit come. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, we're going to continue in singing Faith of Our Fathers, hymn number 645.
Hey, good morning. Happy Father's Day again on this beautiful day. Um, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, a day of how we can give tribute to the fathers around this nation. We pray that the activities they have planned with their family will be blessed and they will have a great um, time of communal and, and just a, a joyous day together and enjoy this beautiful outdoors and weather you've given us. And as we celebrate Father's Day today, we think of the fathers in Ukraine who are having a different type of Father's Day that we can only imagine. Um, they are spending the time on pure survival, uh, worrying about their families in the midst of war, having been responsible to go to the front line to defend their country from invading forces. Lord, we pray for continued sustenance and, and energy and spirit that they can continue to be uplifted through just the odds which are not in their favor. Um, in the midst of this, we give praise to the many hands and volunteers from all over the country that are have made the commitment to leave the security and sanctity of their homes, leave their families, and feel the call to go serve in a dangerous situation, Lord, whether it's in the front lines or humanitarian needs in, at the borders. Lord, we know there are missing Americans that have served there. We pray for their families. We pray for diplomacy to bring them home to their families, We're praying for health and safety and for their well-being, for them and many others from all nations that have converged in Ukraine to try to bring an end to this war. And finally, we, we pray for the end to the war, whether it's through diplomacy or through the sheer resiliency of the Ukrainian people, the strength and courage that they have um, shown us, Lord. We pray for a quick end so the families can return to their homes, to their lives, and rebuild their lives. Lord, we pray for, for two baby. Ege's brother, who is in the Navy, who came from Burma and has an opportunity to write a new chapter in his life and is now serving to protect, to defend democracy in the, somewhere in the Mediterranean. We thank you that he has chosen this. And we pray that he has a sense of pride and duty and honor to serve in the military. We pray for safety for, his, for him and for his crew and, and his commanding officers as they serve and that they, till they return home safely to their families and loved ones. Father, we continue to pray for many here on this list who are either in surgery, having some kind of medical procedure um, in their future, who are recovering, convalescing for Becky Culp, who's with us today, and hopefully she'll have a quick recovery from foot surgery. Pray for Shoal Ryder, who is now in the ER, dealing with painful um, kidney stones. We pray that medical intervention will help her to overcome the pain and this um, terrible situation she's in. Pray for Dottie Williams who's continue therapy and pray for her strength to be returned to her and for Harold, Harold Jenkins and Lee Dickinson, Scott's sister, for health, various health concerns and for Chris, Curtis Tatum facing upcoming surgery. Lord, we pray for Tom Davidson, the son of Gail and Randy, who injured her shoulder and has a long, ongoing rehab to bring his shoulder back to, to health. Matt Becker, who is in surgery, surgery or recovering from broken bones and ankle. And for Robert Q's brother-in-law, who is experiencing kidney failure. Lord, we pray for George Ray Manis' uncle for health concerns and Karen, daughter-in-law of Suhar's, her, her MS is getting worse. Lord, we pray for her strength and just optimism and hope during her struggle with this terrible disease. We pray for those people who are in the throes of the battle with cancer, this insidious disease that has affected so many lives, those struggling with cancer. Lord, for Peggy Lacey, Pastor Brad's wife in Concha Hagen, who is experiencing pancreatic cancer, and undergoing a chemo. Mike Edwards with having a kidney removed. For Reverend Sue Bertolette, pastor of St. John's, her cancer is getting worse. And Chris's father, Bill, who is uh, struggling and just continue to fight the good fight against lung cancer. For Ann Brinkley, whose cancer has returned. For Ginny, a friend of Henley's treatment 
undergoing treatment for multiple myel myeloma for Mary Moyer, who uh, was a family of this, this church, also myeloma. A friend of Lancaster's, David Lemuel, whose cancer has returned, Lord, at such a young age to be dealing with this cancer. And Loretta Wampel's Cassandra, who's continued to suffer from liver cancer, Loretta's granddaughter. We pray for Mary Neal, who's having lung cancer, a friend of Ron Mintz's family. Wayne Kyle, a cousin of Jim Castle, stage three cancer. And lastly, Bob Hill, a friend of the Castles, who's also dealing with cancer. Lord, I know many strides have been made in this, in this field. Many, uh, we pray that you will give wisdom to the scientists, doctors, everybody who has a hand in coming up with medicine and cure that will one day make cancer no longer uh, such a debilitating disease for individuals and their families. We also remember in prayer those who are on currently on the youth mission trip in West Virginia. We pray for um, the leaders, Gigi Owens and Pastor Chris. Give them strength, give them uh, patience as they deal with the many uh, navigating uh, logistics of keeping everybody on task. Pray for safe travel mercies as well. Father, we have to say goodbye to many people here. We share our Christian love and sympathy with the family of Zoe Passerini, who's been remembered here for so long, who finally was called home to be with the Lord. We pray for her family. You give her strength. Give them strength and peace at this time. Lord, she was a good Christian. She lived a good life. And now it's time to remember her in memories and good um, through pictures and just uh, be able to talk about what she, how she impacted the lives of many around her. We also say, um, pray for sympathy and well-being for Rob McHugh's family. Her aunt, Sandra Holm, passed away recently, Lord. We pray for the family, for Rob McHugh's family, that they can uh, just be able to um, deal with this loss of a loved one. Bring them peace, bring them comfort in the time of grief. We also share a sympathy with... Um, to the Stephanie and Culver families on the home going of Ron to Stephanie. We pray for strength and, and uh, hope in this time of, of uh, grief, Lord, too, that he will be home with you. Lord, for all these people who have passed on, we pray for the families to remember them in a good light and in peace. Thank you for this day, Lord, and we pray as we look at the world around us with the many, many problems, we just pray that we as Christians, those who have Commit ourselves to you. We continue to be the light for the world, to bring the dark parts of the world into light. Just help us to speak, act, and behave in ways that would point others to you. We pray for those who are committing atrocities across the world and bring impression upon people that they will realize that what they seek is just fleeting and temporary. And what is permanent is that they would turn their eyes to you and seek you instead. While they pray all this, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. Okay. Well, at this time, we have time to give our tithes and our offering. It's a joy to be able to come to the Lord and to give. Um, as we continue to serve in the different ministries and the life of the church. So I'd ask the ushers to come forward, please.
so grateful. I pray for each and every father, each and every man, Father God, that's dedicated to you. I pray that you touch their hearts. Give them a good year, Father, and bless each and every one of us. We love you and thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, we do thank you. Amen. Well, my friends, let's remain standing as we continue in song. Hopefully that got your blood moving. Uh, at this time, we have opportunity for children to head out to Children's Church. So you can go ahead and go on out. And um, so today, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, well, of course, it's Father's Day. So I'm going to talk about my father a little bit, too. And, uh, but I thought it would be kind of interesting to do something a little bit different today. Um, as I talk about um, the idea of passing my father's faith to my children, we are going to talk a little bit more about the value of strong parenting and what fathers can bring to that, which I think is so, so important. So even as I talk about fathers today, the, the value of what I'm talking about it cuts across all people. So don't feel like because you're, you're a mom or you're a female out here that you have nothing to do with this message. No, you do. Um, it's for all of us to hear this. So... Um, as we begin, though, I want to share with you a, a prayer that um, I found that I was kind of moved by, and partly because of what I'm going to talk about today, too. Um, it comes from a gentleman, uh, a pastor named Reverend Chuck Curry, 
And uh, I thought we could say this, I'll say this prayer for us this morning, um, because I thought it was really good. So why don't we bow our heads and let's pray um, as we think of fathers today, and then we'll jump into the message. Here's what it says. So Lord, we come to you, we give our thanks, creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings for them all and forgiveness where it is needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond their reach. So too, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or fathers are absent. And grandfathers and uncles and brothers and cousins and teachers and pastors and coaches and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. In your holy name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. I found it to be a moving prayer, and I wanted to share that with you um, this morning. So um, I shared you a little bit, I want to share with you a little bit more about Father's Day today, but in, and from a different perspective. Um, and, you know, and I, I do understand that not everybody here has um, had maybe the experience that I've had where I've had a really good upbringing with my father. Maybe some of you had fathers that were, were not, didn't treat you too well or had some struggles with your father. And, um, but at the same time, I'm thankful that we have the Heavenly Father to look to for the example of what we need. But it's fascinating as I thought about my own father, I thought about my dad, I can honestly say that I have no regrets about anything my father ever did for me or did for us as a family. I mean, of course, okay, I'll admit it, I was punished at times, okay? That happened. But um, I can't honestly say there's nothing that I can look back on and say that I wish my father never said that or did that. I can't do that. In fact, it was actually quite the opposite. Um, you know, it's fascinating. This is my dad. Um, this is years ago. Um, my brother Chris is there, and, and I'm there on the, I'm not sure what side that would be. I guess you're, I don't know. I can't. I'm the opposite. It doesn't matter. But um, we were sitting on my, my sister's back porch. This is years ago where we were just hanging out after it for a picnic or something, I guess. But it was not uncommon that it, we, many of us would find ourselves just sitting around my father to listen and talk to him because of the wisdom he just poured out. The, the way in which he just kind of gave of himself. It was really awesome. Here's a picture of our whole family. That was the last of five. Yes, I'm the small one on the end there. Um, such a great picture, right? And um, my mom's in the middle there. Um, so, and, but this is, a, this is a great picture. Yes, I was small at one point. Um, that's me being held by my father. Um, he's holding me, wondering how we're, he's actually at this point going, how the heck am I going to feed five kids? Um, especially this one, is what he's thinking. Um, you know, and, um, I, you know, my, here's my, my brother Chris and I, but my dad and I were playing. I got, um, I got a Coleco basketball game for Christmas. You know, let me tell you something. For all of you out there to think that the new fancy video games are awesome, Nothing like watching a red dot go up and down the screen, right? That's all it was. And left, right, left, right, forward, forward. You know, it's all it did, you know? But, uh, but it was fun. And, um, and, of course, we had snow at our house, you know. Dad and I, I actually think I watched my dad shovel um, while he did that. But, um, but, yeah, you know, and, you know, I got to tell you, um, it was a joy to do these things. And my, it's my dad and I, it's my nephew, Ryan. And Ryan is um, now... Uh, has two children of his own, and actually is um, my son Nate works for Ryan. So Ryan is my son Nate's boss. So it's kind of fun. But there's another side of my dad. My dad was a chemistry professor. I think I've mentioned that before, and he, and he did it for 42 years at Lehigh University. But there's another side of my dad that was kind of a crazy side too. And um, he would often do this for birthday parties or even for like vacation Bible school at church and stuff or different things. He would dress up as the crazy professor. And um, do fun things and like actually do, I don't know what he would do, but it would make people, the kids would love it because they'd see like smoke and things pouring out and things blowing up and they think it was great, you know. 
And, you know, my dad, uh, you know, of course, liked to make mustaches with licorice. Um, yeah. My dad with my grandfather, that's his dad. And um, my dad loved to sing in the choir. Here's my dad at one of the practices at choir at First Baptist Bethlehem. Um, my father did have an interesting upbringing, though, and that's where I'm going with this. Um, he was the only child of Charles and Hattie Crayhansel. My dad was Charles Jr. And, um, and this, is his, this is him with his parents uh, many, many, many moons ago. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting upbringing. And actually, my father learned how to smoke at an early age. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he could have qualified for the Little Rascals, too. Um, he could have. Um, but um, this is my, uh, my dad with his parents at a young age. And, um, and as he grew up, um, of course, and um, my dad turned into looking like Clark Kent. And, uh, but um, here's the thing I want to tell you about, and this is why I'm showing this to you. Um, it's, this is why. Um, God made a way. You might be thinking, what does that mean? Well, Aunt Mary Wilson, my father's aunt, at his young age of about eight years old, took my dad to church. And um, what's fascinating about that is as he took her, she was the one that took him to church, and he went when he was eight, and that's when my dad met my mom at eight years old. And they kind of knew each other, but then they started like, you know, then they, they got middle school and then they got to know each other. And then they got to like really like each other. Next thing you know, they're high school sweethearts and then they get married and those kind of, that, well, you know what happens after that. I'm last of five kids. But um, the point of all this is that my aunt Mary Wil Wilson, my great aunt, I should say, is my dad's aunt, um, was a moment in time where we can look back and say, Something very significant happened in the life of my father. And I'll, I'll talk about that more in a minute here in a second. But, but what's happened is it broke a pattern. It broke a pattern in my dad's own family life. Because, see, my grandparents were not very interested in going to church. They went maybe Easter, maybe Christmas, I guess. But they weren't. They didn't go every week. In fact, they wasn't really on their priority list. But my Aunt Mary Wilson asked, well, can I take Charlie to church? And so she took him to church. And I'm grateful for that, that, he, that she did that and made that, that step of faith to make that happen. Because that was a life-changing moment, I believe, not only for my father, but it was for my mother, but it was also for the five kids, and quite frankly, folks, I don't know if I'd be standing here in front of you today if it weren't for Aunt Mary Wilson. I want you to think about that. Think about that, how God worked, I don't know, 80-some, now more like 77 years ago, I guess it is now, to make something like that happen. And my dad grew up, and, and he kept, he, he, he was very active at the church, and they, um, they ended up winning um, basketball games. My dad was a very good athlete. And, um, but my also, what was cool was my father was my basketball coach as well, our church. And my dad, the joke, running joke for my dad, because they, we were winning so many seasons. We kept winning games and games. And they would do these banquets at our church for the basketball team. And um, so at the end of the season, they would do this big dinner, and all the church folks would come. It was a big deal. And, um, and they would always make up a program. And on the, on the face of the program, they would always write through some sort of funny sketch or something. Well, here's a picture of one of the front ones. Um, it, it says, we sure have a heavy responsibility on our team. Yeah, carrying off the coach after each victory. And it's a picture of my dad. Well, whatever, you get the point. But my dad was our camp director as well at the camp. Here we are trying to spit watermelon seeds, which never really works, but... Um, but my dad also was the moderator at our church for what seemed like a hundred years. But there's also something else about my dad that I, that I think many of you will appreciate and you'll see, you see it in me 
and I see in myself. My dad liked to work. He liked to use his hands. He liked to get down on his knees and to do the things. And this is actually a picture of him at the church when they were building a new church. And he was there working on it and getting things done there. And to me, growing up, I have to tell you that um, it was fascinating because it wasn't in my grandfather's DNA to do all these things or want to do these things. But again, it was by the grace of God that changed the pattern. And my father's spiritual DNA was passed on to us as children of the things that really matter in life, which was Jesus, which was family, and church community. When I think about the value of strong parenting and fathers, um, there's a, a gentleman named Jack Brewer. You might know the name. He was a former NFL safety He's actually a chairman for American First Policy Institute, which actually works for the Center for Opportunity for, for those in need. And um, actually, it's statistics that were taken from, uh, that he writes about, statistics from the United States Census Bureau that shows that nearly 18.5 million children grow up without their fathers. That's from the Census Bureau. And um, in comparison to other countries, we unfortunately take the lead in fatherless homes, which is sad to hear that. 80% um, of single parent homes are led by single moms. And um, which also, if you, read, if you read into that, you can infer that there's a crisis of missing fathers. Um, and it goes on. I could go on with other stats. But, but I also know, too, that even um, I was reading an article uh, through Focus on the Family. And, they, and they, they quoted some of the same Census Bureau, some of the same information. It, wasn't, it was just stuff you can read about. But, but one of the things that's true is that kids who grow up without a dad or at least a father figure in their life, and it doesn't mean they have to have that, their father, a uh, physical father, but, uh, but to have a father in their life, a role model. Kids that grow up without the father usually tend to be, have more behavioral problems or they're actually more likely to drop out of school or have other issues, like depression, anxiety, or maybe get more involved in drugs and alcohol. Somebody has done all these studies, but it is true. When there's out, and the truth of it is, when there isn't strong parenting across the board, we see a lot of this. But the fascinating thing is, this, uh, Jim Daly um, from Focus on the Family writes this, there are many reasons that a dad might choose to leave his family, but one significant reason may be that he did not have a present or positive example of a dad in his own life. He didn't have anyone to teach him what it means to be a father or demonstrate to him the steadfast love and self-sacrifice that fatherhood requires. The lack of example impacted his confidence and ability to parent his children and may have caused overwhelming fear when facing fatherhood. Let me tell you, friends, when I think about that, when I read that, that's true. There's truth in that. But when I read it, too, I have to tell you that I'm thankful because I thought of my father when I read that quote. Because even though he grew up in a home that did not promote the necessary faith of God and uh, the idea of keeping so, even some of those godly values in the home, my father was somehow changed and brought up and brought us up to be completely involved and concerned about the things of God. And truly it was by the grace of God that this happened. Uh, there's a professor named Christian Smith who is out of Notre Dame, writes this. He goes, parents, this is, this is a great quote. He says, parents are huge, absolutely huge, nearly a necessary condition. Without question, catch this, ready? The most important pastor a child will ever have in their life is a parent. Think about that. The most important pastor a parent will have in their life is a, the, most pa the pastor is the parent. That's, that's powerful, powerful news. You know, and I, and I know that some of us didn't grow up with the strongest fatherly figures. I get that. But I'm thankful even in Psalm 27, 10, when it says, though my father and mother might forsake me, the Lord will receive me. The Lord will accept me. The Lord will care for me. I don't, I don't know about you, but I even read it and think I can find comfort in this. And I think many of us can find comfort in this even though we might have a real struggle seeing the value 
of our father because of maybe abuse or being a, have seen that abuse or being absent or seeing abuse at times or maybe there's other struggles. The truth of it is that some of us didn't have very good fatherly figures in our life. And I, I'm sorry for that. But the truth of it is we can know that our Heavenly Father is actually the perfect example. And we can go to Him and we can count on Him all the time. There's three things I want to share with you about this. And we're going to kind of go through these three points this morning um, as I finish up my message here. They're simple, but they're good reminders for all of us. And not just truly for dads, but I do believe for all of us. Um, especially when we think about how we can pass on our faith to the next generation. Um, the truth of it is, we see and have seen less people in church today. What I mean by today is I mean 2000s or whatever. You could say that if you want. And it's because every generation there has been somewhat of a, a de slow decline in church attendance. And that's you can go look it up. It's there. You can see it. But I also believe it is parenting and parents that aren't seeing the importance of what really matters of wanting to bring their kids to hear the words of God and hear the gospel. Now, here's the good news. I heard a story about somebody this morning who's in their 30s who made the comment that I want to make sure we bring our kids up in church because where, where else are they going to get the things they need to hear about that are just as important from hearing it from God himself. So that's good news. And that's the point. And the value of that is that I do believe that this declining attendance is because, well, unfortunately, it's because a couple generations ago, or even three, 30-some years ago, unfortunately, there were parents then that just didn't care anymore. My question is, how do we break that pattern? How do we help to break that pattern to get people back to places where they can say, you know what, I really need this. I really need my, my kids to come and to participate and be in church. It used to be even, I'll mention this, it's not even in my message, but it's important because as I've done studies for youth ministry for years, it used to be back in the 80s and 90s. People might fall away from the church, but when they had kids, they tended to come back. But that's not true anymore. That's not happening. Because there was nothing really rooted or instilled in them years ago, the value and the importance of wanting to be at church all the time. And that's a problem. And so the first one here, number one, go to the Lord first. Go to the Lord first to lead well. And when I look at that, when I think about that, I was, rem I was reminded of Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 7, which I know you hear this and you'll think, yeah, I know that verse. It's a great verse, right? What's it say? It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. Now, you'll notice on the screen, I made, obviously, I highlighted one in blue and one in more of like a, I don't know, I don't know what color it is, red, maybe. Um, but you'll notice it's almost like two parts, isn't it? Because the first part is the Lord saying to the adults, saying to the parents, you need to absorb yourself in the word. You need to put yourself into the word. You need to be excited about the word so that then you can then impress onto your children the values and the importance of following the Lord as well. Think about that. It's almost like a two-stage approach that's in this verse, in this passage. Step one. Adults, family, leaders, you need to fill your life with the word of God. Number two, take what you're doing and let it overflow and move out into the presence of children. Whether that is your own children or maybe your grandchildren, but let it pour out into them then as well. But you can't pour anything out into them if you're not pouring anything into your life as well. That's tough. That's why it's so important to pour and look and think about how we should be people that are thinking about what it means to pour this into our lives all the time. I, um, 
And then you know, it goes on there, and it says, talk about it when you sit at home and when you walk around the, on the road and when you lie down, wherever you get up. It doesn't matter where you are, you do it. So um, I was actually fascinated this, uh, this past, I don't know what it was, when did we get ice cream? I know, you're thinking, well, what's that have to do with anything, right? <laughs> I don't remember what day it was. Thursday. Yeah, no. Friday, Friday, Friday night. Sorry. <laughs> I know, here I am having a discussion about ice cream. No, here, here's, here's why. So Heather, Heather and I and Jake, we went out to get something to eat, and then we went and hit some golf balls. And while we were hitting golf balls, well, we had to warm up for Monday, right? I had to get ready because we got to win. Um, yeah, you laugh. I know. You keep laughing because it's not going to happen. But, but, but we got a phone call. We got a text message from my son, Ben. Ben's like, hey, can you pick me up? I had to drop a vehicle off. If you guys can come get me, I'll buy ice cream. Right? So we go and do that. Well, guess who really bought ice cream? Never works, you know? So anyways, so, but we ended up back to a place in Bethlehem called Oasis. And I've gone to Oasis as a kid. It was near my parents' house. We used to go there. We used to ride our bikes there. It was a great little place to go. We'd go up there and play miniature golf and get ice cream. It was a fun place to be, right? And um, what was fascinating was it changed ownership. It changed hands. And when we went in there, I was like, I'm looking around this place, and I'm going, wow, this is awesome. And I'm looking, and up on the, there's like, on the counter is like the verse of the day. On the wall over there, there's like another scripture verse from Thessalonians. Over here, there's be thankful. I mean, there's like, it's just filled with godly scripture and words all over the place in the, in the diner. And we were just like, kind of like, wow, this is awesome. But it was all uplifting stuff. Everything, anybody who walks in there is going to look at that and go, ah, oh, this is great. And all I could think about was, you walk in there, you are immersed, and you are looking at the Word of God. And I'm thinking about how I, you know, personally myself, and even for all of us, that's what we need to represent and how we do when we walk around. Now, people see us, they see the Word of God walking and talking, which also means we need to guess what? We need to follow the Lord's leading as well. Um, it was in John 5, 19. I think this is a great example of, um, well, it begins that great example of who Jesus did and why he did what he did. And um, it's actually a verse that comes off the heel of Jesus healing the man um, on the Sabbath when he tells him to pick up his mat and walk. And the Pharisees are not happy that he healed somebody on the Sabbath, okay? They're not mad that he healed somebody, but they're mad that he did it on the Sabbath. And so they, they got on his case about it. But Jesus made it clear that he only does what the Father would have him do. And this is what it reads. Jesus gave him this answer. Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And it's, it's a great passage because Jesus is acknowledging two things very clearly to them. He is saying, look, I am, I, I'm admitting to you right here in front of you right now. I'm the son of God. Like, you would know that by my language. You would understand that, that I'm clarifying that. And I'm only going to do what the Father will have me do. And it's an, it's an acknowledgement that he is basically saying that the Father in heaven is leading him to do the things that need to be done, the things that need to be done that are necessary. And I even read a kind of versions of that in John 14 this morning in our call to worship. And Jesus is not doing these things independently of God the Father, but rather he's doing them with God the Father himself. And this is a great example, isn't it, for us? Because we shouldn't be thinking about how we can do life independently. We shouldn't be thinking that way. We can easily think we can do it on our own, that we don't need to have any help from anywhere else. But I think just as Jesus acknowledged that the Son can do nothing by himself, that he needs the leading of the Father in heaven, we need to acknowledge our need to be led by the Father of heaven as well. And I believe as we acknowledge that and as we witness that, even to people around us and even to the younger ones around us, they will see that example and they will learn that pattern and that value of going to the Lord for help. Going to the Lord 
for decision making. Going to the Lord for answers to prayer by putting the Lord at the center of their lives. Here's the last one. It's the third one. It's to, to be a good nurturer. I think this is so important, even for, for not just for, for dads, but for moms, for everybody. And when I think about it, I think about Galatians 5, right? I think about Galatians 5, and I'll get there in a second. But, and it tells us, of course, about the fruits of the Spirit. But in Galatians 5, we do read about the sinful acts of, the sinful acts of nature that we can have in our lives. And there's plenty of bad things that are listed there. But there's something that kind of stands out in it. And it kind of reveals itself because it really sums up all of them all together. And that is having, guess what? Selfish ambition. Selfish ambition. And I believe selfishness can cause a multitude of issues for any of us. But when we begin to become more selfless... Our focus turns on how we can serve our fellow brother and sister in Christ or to serve our neighbor. And we need to remember, Jesus himself said, everyone is your neighbor, right? Everyone is. So when we are selfless, I believe that we naturally gravitate towards being nurturing people. We do. When we, when we work on becoming more and more selfless, we gravitate toward becoming a nurturing people. And we take on, I believe, the characteristics that reveal itself in the fruits of the Spirit. Of course, which we can, some of you can rattle off by heart, right? There's love, there's joy, there's peace, peace there's forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. You could say those who belong to Christ have crucified their selfish ambitions in their life. But they've taken on the Spirit. My friends, I, when I think about parenting, I know for myself, um, when I think about what it means to lead children by example, and, and, and I think all of us that are parents here or have served as parents in many ways, you know what it's like to make sacrifices. You know what it's like to give of your time. You know what it's like to, to give of your money. You know what it's like to, to make things or to, to do other things that are necessary for your kids. Well, when we think about that, when we think about what that means, you can understand what it means then to become Selfless, if you're doing it in a selfless attitude, not a, well, it's my children, I have to do this. I want you to think about that, what I just said. It's my children, so I have to do this. Our attitude should be, I'm doing this out of the love of Christ, not because I feel obligated to do this because it's my children, but I'm doing it because I'm feeling the work of the Spirit in me to motivate me and move me to do these things that are important for others around me. That's the focus that we should have. Because then it's not just about the children that might be we're responsible for, but it's all people. Then we have this sense that Christ is moving us to reach and to teach and to work and to love upon all people around us. So I challenge you on this today and I believe that we do. We, we need people to be like this, to go to the Lord first. We need to fill our lives first and then let it overflow into others around us. We need to follow the Father's lead, right? Just as Jesus took the Father's leading, we need to as well. So Jesus himself admitted it. I don't do anything without my Father. And my friends, how important it is to be a good nurturer, to want to be a good nurturer to people to be an encourager, to love, and to care, and to lift people up. That's my prayer for us. That's my prayer for dads. That's my prayer for moms. That's my prayer for all of us, that we would be, have that kind of attitude in our lives as we go to seek and to serve for Christ. Amen? Let's pray together. God, thank you for uh, just the message that rings, the message that tells us that we need to be people that are, are standing up, and caring for others. 
that we seek you first, that we abide in you, Lord, that we are motivated by you. Lord, help us to be and to follow, to become the example of Christ as he is going on to lead and to follow you. We ask this all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, as we go to close on our last hymn, This Is My Father's World, I would encourage all of you, um, if you, in this time and in this day, to take a moment even just to think, Lord, am I doing my job of filling my life with you more? Am I really thinking about how I can be the presence and the life of Christ around other people as well? I want you to think about that as we sing this song. But also, for those of you that are here today that maybe you're looking for a church or a place to belong or that you want to come forward this morning in this time of song to be able to say, I want to join this church. I want to be a part of what's going on here. Or maybe you're making a new decision to follow Christ. We would love to hear from you and have you come forward here as well. My friends, let's stand and let's sing. My God, I need that reminder that this is your world, Lord. And Lord, I pray in the midst of all that is happening, even in this world, the struggles and the struggles that are going on, help us, Lord, to remember that you are sovereign and you are mighty and you are powerful and that you truly are the Father of all things. And God, as I think about that, I pray, Lord, for all of us here today, that as we go, may we go in and celebrate and have times with our fathers today or maybe we make that phone call, whatever it might be. Lord, I pray that as even as David prayed, that there would be a blessed time. There would be a time that is filled with good fellowship and a time to be able to be shared. Um, but that it would, all things, Lord, point to you. So be with us now as we go. Watch us and take care of us, Lord. May we walk into your footsteps in all things that we do. May we be led by you in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.